Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today's episode is brought to you by Women's Rights News on Facebook and Instagram. Here is the Feisty News for Women. The Islamabad police have launched a gender protection unit to respond to the victims of the gender-based violence and crime. A dedicated female police staff, as well as a psychiatrist and medical staff, are present to provide assistance to the affected women, children, and transgender people. Islamabad police officer Amna Baig won the Integrity Icon Award for her service in leading the Gender Protection Unit. She said, reporting gender violence is the first step to stopping it. Violence often goes unreported. If a female partner is killed, she must have been suffering abuse for quite some time. Due to family and social pressures, such violations go unreported and no one confronts the abuser. As a result, the abuse grows and the abuser gains enough confidence to kill the victim. It is only then that the violence is reported to the police. A gender protection unit. I'm so grateful this exists, but also saddened that we need it. What can we do to shift our society? We need a plan and we need to take action now. In other news, Ghislaine Maxwell was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison for her role in recruiting, enticing, and transporting minors to engage in sex acts with pedophile Jeffrey S. Epstein. In addition to her prison sentence, she was also fined $750,000. Virginia Jeffrey, a survivor, wrote, I want to be clear about one thing. Without question, Jeffrey Epstein was a terrible pedophile. But I never would have met Jeffrey Epstein if not for you, Ghislaine. You deserve to spend the rest of your life in a jail cell. Ghislaine, you are a traitor to women. You are an abuser and a pedophile. You are a monster who deserves much more than 20 years. For enabling the abuse of women, you deserve the same fate that Epstein faced. In other news, According to a new survey titled Black Women Thriving, women in the workplace have been very vocal about the inequities and discrimination they face on the job from gender pay gaps to a lack of child care support. Black women in particular experience specific challenges at the intersection of racial and gender discrimination. But is there more to it? Why aren't black women thriving in the workplace? It certainly has nothing to do with the lack of ability or intelligence. Let's chat with Diana Patton the founder of Rise Advocates Academy, a personal and professional development program to help women advocate for themselves in their workplace and community. At the age of 14, Diana stopped her father from trying to molest her. Now she teaches the same confidence to women so they can stand up for themselves to get the respect and results they deserve. Welcome to the Feisty, Diana. So glad to have you. Can you tell us what Black women really need to be able to advocate for themselves in the workplace? Well, the one thing, T. Erica, that we all as Black women have down, we got the outer part down. We got our nails done. We got our hair done. We got our eyebrows on fleek. Our clothes are done. But what we have yet to do is reconcile ourselves with ourselves. Women lack the confidence to advocate for themselves in the workplace. And the lack of confidence comes from the inability to have an inner still mind. And the lack of confidence is when women aren't able to speak up for themselves in a meeting when they have an unpopular idea, or if they want to challenge their salary, or if they want to promote something that is for diversity, equity, inclusion. It all comes from an inner narrative that speaks your dreams, your thoughts to power. We are not coming from a space of clarity and confidence. Clarity and confidence comes from a very still and peaceful inner demeanor. It comes from a narrative that says, I am powerful and I am healed and I surrender a lack of forgiveness, 
blame, shame, and guilt. When we get to that space, we come from the most powerful place. But that's not talked about a lot, right? We need to come from that space to do our very best advocacy work. Thank you, Diana, for developing such an important program. If you need to develop the confidence to step past your trauma and into your innate confidence, please reach out to Diana on Instagram at Diana Patton. Well, it's time for a break. Did Roe v. Wade begin with a lie? And what can a man do to help a woman heal her heart? The answer to these questions when we come back. Don't miss it. Gentrio is revolutionizing estate planning. My name is Renee Fry, and I'm CEO and founder of Gentrio, a next generation online estate planning solution that offers a digital family vault and team sharing feature. So you can not only create, but also store and share your important estate planning documents like wills and medical and financial powers of attorney. We started Gentrio because our parents only had a modest estate, and yet they still had to pay over $10,000 for estate planning. With my background as a Harvard MBA and CEO of other companies, and my sister's education and experience in marketing, we thought we could do a better job and make it easier and more affordable for others. Gentrio's goal is to support women through all of life's inflection points, so we all can protect who and what we love and all that's important to us. Visit us at gentrio.com, G-E-N-T-R-E-O.com. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the rumor that the woman behind Roe versus Wade was actually a liar? Well, girl, it's true. Norma McCurvey, the woman who identified as Roe in the famous abortion rights case, Roe versus Wade, initially claimed that she was raped by black men, which is why she wanted an abortion. Norma, who was a troubled child who married at the age of 16, she left her husband due to allegations of abuse and gave birth to two children who were then adopted. She became pregnant for the third time at the age of 21. Under strict Texas law, she could not get an abortion and her friends advised her to claim she was raped by black men so that she could get an exception by the courts to have an abortion. Because there is no evidence of a rape, her plan was unsuccessful and she later admitted that she had lied. She then looked to get an illegal abortion but could not find a provider. Her doctor advised her to speak to an adoption attorney and she agreed, which led to her being referred to attorneys who were looking for pregnant women seeking abortions to stand with them as they attempted to gain favor for federal protection of abortion access, which then became the infamous Roe v. Wade case. The trial took three years to reach the Supreme Court, during which time Norma gave birth to her child and gave her up for adoption. She never attended a single trial in the Roe v. Wade case. After the Roe v. Wade decision was reached, Norma contacted the press to reveal that she was Jane Roe. She initially stated that she sought an abortion because she was unemployable and depressed. Years later in 1983, she went to the press to share that she wanted an abortion because she was raped. She then went to the press to repeal the claim and say that the rape claims were untrue. In 1994, Norma published a book called I Am Roe. And during one of her book signings, she was approached by an anti-abortion evangelical minister who convinced her to join forces against abortion. Norma followed the advice of the minister, just as she followed the advice of those who suggested she claimed she was raped and the doctor who suggested she speak to the adoption attorneys. The troubled girl seemed to continue to look for someone to tell her how to get life right, and she found her ticket. Norma spent the next 22 years speaking out against abortion and campaigning to make abortion illegal. Then, in a videotaped interview conducted for a film shortly before her death in 2017, Norma admitted that her anti-abortion activism had been an act, and she had been paid to speak out against abortion the entire time. If a young woman wants to have an abortion, that's no skin off my ass. That's why they call it choice, Norma reportedly said. Hmm. Maybe Shakespeare was correct when he wrote, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. Norma had a choice between a profitable lie and a painful truth, and she chose to profit. 
How many other leaders are doing the same? In other news, we're living the feisty life and with so many horror stories about men hurting women, sometimes we need a reminder that good men do exist. In today's edition of He's a Good Man, let's hear about a man who represents the good in this world. Meet Ariel. Hey Ariel, do you know a good man? I do, I know a wonderful man who is the most amazing person I've ever met. Um, he's just incredible to not just me, but to my family, to my friends, to the people around him. He's just the most amazing guy now. Um, he is a, basically he's been there for me since day one. Um, we started dating and then basically from there, he's always been really supportive. Um, and I've kind of come to realize that um, I never really had that in my life before. Someone who's constantly there and just is so, you know, wanting to help the community and do all these amazing things. Um, he's just, you know, very philanthropic. He is always has my back on anything. I love singing, so he's supportive of my music and everything that I do. Um, he just is literally, I, I literally can't even put into words how incredible he makes me feel as a person. Um, he never tries to change me in any way. He, I mean, I work in the same office as him. He's supportive of all the staff that, you know, he works with. Um, there is literally no one ever has anything bad to say about him. Um, and he's just, you know, the most loving and caring person I've ever met in my life. So um, I'm so grateful to have him, um, something I've, Again, I've never had before where someone who listens to what I have to say and sits with me and just kind of um, gets what I'm going through, even if I don't say much, like he'll know. And he just kind of shows me that he's there, like whether it's putting an arm around me and being like, babe, I got you, or it's, you know, um, you know, uh, me talking for a while and then him being like, okay, well, how can I help you? How, what, what can I do to help you? And uh, again, it's not even just for me. I've seen it with other people too with him and uh, he's just an amazing guy. Jeremy Dover, you are a good man. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for helping to heal the world by bringing peace to the life of a woman. Healthy love is what we all need. Your love matters. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. News for women.